Hi guys. Alright, a happy Monday. Feed those ancestors. Right away. Like right now. No. Well, yeah, actually yes, do. So, how is everybody? Um, I am going to be leaving my regular Facebook and just use my public page because it's, I'm just I'm sick of the stupidity. It is ridiculous on Facebook anymore, so I'm done over it. Oh, it's snowing. Another way to get another, uh, yeah, bronchitis. Alright, so I've been reading more. And it's even just more insane. It gets more insane, more insane. It, it's amazing. So, it's just really, really cool how everything, it's, it's kind of like a Nostradamus, or whatever, however the fuck you say his name. Um, it's kind of like his crap that he uh, predicted, his quad, quatrains. Uh, is that right? I think. So, um, it's really cool though because it's talking about just like everything that's been left out of the Bible. Um, the sacred books that have been left out of the Bible. Uh, it talks about Thoth. Um, Enoch is actually Thoth. So, um, they just totally fucked the Bible up. So, here we go. So, okay, right here it says, okay. So, you must translate the Hebrew text in this manner. So, okay, you shall make two calves of sphinxes made of gold and worked by hammer at each side of the oracle. So, we're still talking about the oracle, the tarot. So, um, and you shall place one facing one side and the other facing the other side. So, um, the cherubs or sphinxes were in effect coupled in pairs at each side of the ark and their heads turned towards the four corners of the mercy seat, oh seat, mercy seat, which they covered with their wings. So that would kind of look like the trinket box that um, Isis stands on, which is really cool. So, um, so they covered it with their wings, which were curved into a vault, thus shading the crown and the golden tablet, which they supported on their shoulders while looking at each other in the eyes and looking at the mercy seat. So. This is what it looks like. A little figure right there. Very much Egyptian. Very much Egyptian, which is amazing. So it all really kind of goes back to Egypt. Everything does. All of this. It is incredible. So, um, yeah, they protect the golden tablet, which is the uh, tablet of Thoth. So, um, okay, so the Ark thus had three sections or three levels representing, um, wow these words I can't say. Um, Atsluth, Atsluth, Yetzera, and Bria, the three wor worlds of the Kabbalah, the base of the coffer, to which were attached the four rings for the two carrying poles, um, analogous, analogous, analogos, analogous, I don't know, analogous or analogous, which is it? So, to the columns of the temple. So, Jashin and Boaz, the body of the coffer, from which the sphinxes came out in relief, and the cover shaded by the wings of the sphinxes. So the base represented the realm of salt, so to speak, in the language of the adepts of Hermes. So, the coffer was the realm of mercury, or of Azoth, and the cover was the realm of sulfur, or of fire. This is so fucking interesting. So the other um, cultic objects, were no less allegorical, but we should need an entire book to describe and explain them. So this is still all having to do with what we talked about yesterday, with the Terra, with um, all of the, uh, you know, the different whatever, like whatever I said yesterday. So, yeah, Saint Martin in his um, natural tableau of the re uh, relationships which exist between God, man, and the universe. It's fucking amazing had followed, so as we have said, the division of the tarot, um, and provides for the 22 keys, a rather lengthy mystical commentary. So, 
Postel had the same direction, and while only naming the tarot in the figure of his key to the Arcanum, Arcanum, he designates it in the rest of the book under the name of Genesis of Enoch. So, uh, the book of Enoch. Who has that book? Anybody? I need it. I need to read that book. Um, I have uh, listened to the audiobook, which I think is not as good as having a book and being able to smell the pages. I, I just, that's me. I love to smell the pages of a book. It smells really good. So, alright, so the character of Enoch. So yes, um, everything is really switching for me. Uh, especially with this... The full moon, or the new moon, actually. The new moon, we have the um, eclipse, the energy. is It's just very different, very calm. Um, very nice. It's, it's really nice. So it's letting me reevaluate my beliefs, um, which are basically the same except for, um, I really honestly do believe that Lucifer is, uh, the true God, not Jehovah. So, um, I'm still trying to wrap my, really sink my teeth into that, um, idea, or ideal, or belief. So, alright, the character of Enoch, author of the first sacred book, is effectively identical with that of Thoth, for the Egyptians, of Cadmus, for the, uh, Phoenicians and the and of uh, Palamedes for the Greeks. So all these figures, according to legend, created the alphabets of their uh, respective languages. So it's it's everything is connected. It's all connected. I love it. It is amazing. So the book of um, Hermes or Thoth, big, 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 big importance to me. It should be to a lot of people too. But so yes, I found that very neat. So um, we have found in rather um, extraordinary manner a medal from the 16th century, which is the key to the tarot. It's, I, I want to see that. So uh, they give you the equation how to um, actually. I don't know, it's math, it's mathematical, so, um, they say here, we do not really know if we should mention that this metal and the place where we had found it was shown to us in a dream by the divine Paracelsus, so whatever the case, the metal is in their possession, it represents on one side the mage, um, in German dress of the 16th century, holding his belt in one hand, and in the other, the pentagram, before him on a on his table, between an open book and a closed posture, ten coins or talismans are placed in two lines of three each, and in one square of four. So the feet of the table took the form. Uh, when the feet of the table took the feet of the table form two, and the feet of the mage uh, form two upturned, which would look like. It, the funny Hebrew letters, actually numbers. So the reverse side of the metal contains the letters of the alphabet placed in a magical square in the following way. And this is really cool because it's not, this alphabet has only 22 letters, the V and the N having been repeated twice. So they are, yeah, not there. So they're right there. Wait. There's the alphabet, you guys can maybe see it. I thought that was interesting, really interesting to see. So, very interesting to see. All right, so, yes, um, yes, we should remark that this alphabet has only 22 uh, letters, the V and the N having been repeated, repeated twice, and that is, oh, and that it is arranged in four quinaries, quin, <coughs> Quinaries and a qu quaternary as the key at the base. Okay, so it's getting very uh, like Nostradamus. Nostradamus. The four final letters are two combinations of the binary and the ternary. And read Kabbalistically, they form the word Azoth. So by rendering the configurations of the letters into their values, 
in primordial Hebrew. And by taking the N for the Hebrew N, the Z um, for what it is in Latin, uh, the V for the Hebrew Va, which is uh, pronounced like O, Vo, between two vowels or letters which function as vowels, and the X for the primordial Tau. Yeah, Tau. Um, which had that same shape. So the entire tarot is thus explained on this marvelous marvelous metal worthy of Paracelsus, and which we have hold at the disposition of the curious. So the letters placed four times by five has a have has a summary have as a summary the word um, analogous analogous to I N R I, which you find at the top of uh, the cross. So, and containing all the mysteries of the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah. This is it's just ridiculously insane. I love this. It's amazing. So, the book of the Tarot having such a high scientific importance, it is worth hoping that it shall uh, no longer be altered. So yes, um, all of the Tarot cards have been altered, and they are almost all wrong. I didn't know that. So almost all of them. The Cosmic Tarot, um, okay, yeah, it's wrong. So uh, we have gone through the collection of ancient tarots in the um, empir empirical library. Um, and it is there uh, that we have gathered all the hieroglyphs for which we provide the description. So if you really decipher and like decode uh, the end of this book within the Book of Hermes, I think you can find that metal. I think you can actually do that metal create it for yourself. So, uh, the remains, oh, there remains an important work to be done. That is to engrave and publish a tarot which is rigorously complete and carefully executed. And they say perhaps um, they will do this soon. So, <coughs> hopefully, translated by John Michael Greer and Mark Anthony uh, Mikituck. Hopefully those two um, get that tarot deck done. I don't know if they have or not. So, um, they go on to say, We find uh, vestiges of the tarot among, among all the peoples of the world. So, the Italian tarot is, as we have said, the best conserved and the most faithful. So, the Italian tarot deck, which is probably very expensive. Um, if it's Italian, of course, everything is in Italy. Everything in Italy is expensive, so, um, but it, it is the, the, the most, uh, most accurate to what they want to tell us, so, um, so, but we could perfect it even more with precious information borrowed from Spanish decks. The Two of Cups, for example, um, in Nibis is completely Egyptian, so. As we see therein, two antique vases whose handles are formed by um, ibises, which are, um, yes, birds sacred to Thoth. So, um, so with a cow superimposed, we find um, in this same set of cards a unicorn in the middle of the four coins. So the Three of Cups uh, presents the figure of Isis coming out of a vase and out of the two other vases, two ibises come out, one carrying a crown for the goddess, the other a lotus flower, which he seems to offer her. So, building those connections, the gapping the bridges with the tarot and, and with ancient Egypt. So, so the four aces contain the image of the, what is that word, of the hieratic and the sacred serpent. So, and in certain decks, in the middle of the four of coins, instead of a symbolic unicorn, we find the double triangle of Solomon. It's just, I mean, this gets even more interesting and more interesting. So, um, mine actually do. Mine incorporate, um, the Cosmic Tarot incorporates, like, everything throughout the entire freaking world. Um, we have Isis, we have Thoth, uh, but I do still think that, um, I am really gonna need the Italian tarot. It sounds even more exciting than any other tarot deck. So, alright. I do think the Cosmic Tarot has the um, Triangle of Man, or of Solomon in it too. 
him. I think. I would have to go and look, and I just don't feel like it because I'm really lazy right now. So, German tarot decks are more altered. So, and we find little more than the numbers of the keys overloaded with the bizarre or absurd figures. So, we can just say, screw the German tarot deck. We have in our possession a Chinese tarot, and there is to be found in the Imperial Library several samples from a similar deck. Paul uh, Bochier, in his remarkable book on playing cards, provided several very well-made specimens of such a deck. So the Chinese tarot um, conserves several other primordial, primordial emblems. So, we can clearly distinguish the coins and the swords, but it is more difficult to find the cups and the wands in them. So, that's why the writer, the writer way um, is very, just very easy, simple, very simplified. So, um, so it was in this time of the Gnostic and the, oh, what's that word, Man Manichean, 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 whatever, herseries that the tarot must have become lost to the church. So, alright, so the church actually did use the tarot. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So, um, and it is in that same era that the meaning of the book of Revelation was lost also. So it was no longer understood that the seven seals of this Kabbalistic book are the seven pentacles whose figures that we provide, and that they are explained by the analogy of the numbers, of the characteristics and the figures of the tarot. Thus the universal tradition of the unique religion was momentarily interrupted. The shadows of doubt were spread all over the earth. It resembled um, ignorance rather than true Catholicism. So. I'm, I'm wondering, Catholicism, hmm, I'm not sure. So, and the universal revelation had disappeared for a time. So, um, the explication of the book of St. John through the characters of the Kabbalah, Kabbalah will be a new revelation which has already been foreseen by several distinguished mages. Here is how um, one among them Augusti um, Aho expresses himself. So this is really cool. I mean, this is really cool. It just gives you so much. Um, it, it, it's biblical, but it's it's biblical in a mystical sense. So it's not like uh, you have to accept Jesus or you're you know going to burn in hell. And it's not like that. So it's very cool. So. But yeah, it's right here. The poem of Revelation supposes of the young evangelist a complete system of traditions developed by him alone. So, um, it is written in the form of visions and compresses into dazzling um, frames of poetry um, of all the um, er, irish irradiation, all of the philosophy of the civilizing African. So, um, it's, it's just really, really neat. So, uh, what else did he say? It's just really, really neat, so. Alright. It, it kind of makes me wonder. So, it, it says here, right here, an inspired bard, the author skims through a series of primary facts. So, he describes in general terms the history of society from one cataclysm to another and even beyond. Hmm. So, the truth which he reveals are prophecies come from on high and afar of which he sounds the echo. So he is the voice which cries out, the voice which sings the harmonies of the desert and prepares the paths toward, paths toward the light. So his words explode with influence and command our faith because he had just brought out, um, brought to that, brought to the barbarians the oracles of Leo, and revealed the admiration of future civilizations, the firstborn of the sons. So, the theory of the four ages, that's what's really interesting, the theory of the four ages, which is, where'd I go? Oh, found in Hindu scriptures, the theory of four ages holds that all of time follows a repeating sequence of four periods, each of which is worse than one before it. The fourth age ends in catastrophe, and then the first golden age reoccurs. Hmm. Is that happening right now? Kind of
looks like it. So, all right. It's this theory of the four ages is found in Revelation, as it is found in the book of Zoroaster and the Bible. So, the gradual reestablishment of the primordial federation and the reign of God among the peoples. Um, free of the tyrant's yoke and the blindfold of error. It is clearly prophesied for the end of the fourth age and the renovation of the cataclysm described first in the distant future with the cons consummation of time. So, very odd, very odd, but I mean I like it. The description of the cataclysm and its duration, the new world having been cleared of the waves and appearing under the sky with all its charms, the great serpent tied by an angel to the bottom of the well of the abyss for a time. So, the dawn at long last of time to a come as prophesied by the verb, which appears to the apostle, apostle right at the start of his poem. So, that's a very short, a very short poem. It's very nice. So, um, his head and his hair were white. His eyes sparkled. His feet seemed of fine bronze. When still in the furnace, his voice um, equaled the noise of great waters. So, he held seven stars in his right hand, and from his mouth arose a well-sharpened, double-edged glaive. Knife? Is that a knife or something? So, it's very odd, very interesting, too. Um, I always thought of uh, whatever this person should be uh, would have dark hair. I don't know. So. Yes, so his uh, visage was as bright as the sun in full force. So here is or Ormuzd, Osiris, Surya, the Lamb of Christ, with the Lamb, the Christ, the Ancient of Days, the Man of Time, and the River, as sung by Daniel. So, he is the first and the last, he who was and who must be, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he holds in his hands the key to the mysteries. So he opens the great abyss. So now, this is this is where uh, Nicholas, if you ever watch this, my videos anymore, this is what interested me. So, um, Ormuzd, or Ormus, or Ahura Mazda, is the Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian god of light. So, Osiris is the Egyptian god of resurrection. So, Surya is the Hindu god of the sun. So, if that gives a little insight into uh, what you were wondering a while ago, um, that came back to me through that. So, so yeah, so he holds his hand, oh, he holds in his hand the key to the mysteries. So he opens the great abyss. Weird, very weird, so it's even weirder of the central fire where the death rests under a tenant a tent of darkness where the great serpent sleep awaiting for the awakening of the centuries so it's just it's very crazy and then this is really cool so so mr um ao then explains several images whose analogies are striking and which are found in almost all sacred books so his words are highly noteworthy. So, alright, in all primordial verbs, the parallels between physical relationships and moral relations are established along the same radical lines. Each word carries with it its material and perceptible definition, and the living language is so perfect and true that it is simple and natural for creative men. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I, I'm still blown away. So, alright, the seer expresses with the same word, slightly modified, the sun, daylight, truth, and when applying the same epit, or epith, wait, epithet, whatever, to the white sun and the lamb, he says, lamb or Christ instead of sun. Alright, so that kind of gives us a little more into, um, oh, Ormus, or Orm, Ormus, the, so, and sun instead of truth, light, civilization, and there is no allegory, but true relationships grasped 
and expressed with inspiration. So, uh, but when the children of the night stay in their uh, barburos, an incoherent uh, dialect, sun, day, light, truth, lamb, the wise relationship so clearly expressed by the primordial verb is erased and disappears. And through simple translation, the lamb and the sun become allegorical beings, become symbols. So, I, I really, really need to get better so I can sit down and I can actually take a day and do this math crap and really find out what's going on with, especially with the tarot, multiplying, you know, the cards with the other cards. I just think that's amazing. I've never seen it that way until this book. So, all right. So yes, they, the lamb and the sun become um, allegorical beings, um, just become symbols. So note that in effect, uh, the word allegory itself signifies in its uh, Celtic definition, change of discourse. Translation. The observation which we have just made rigorously applies to all the cosmo cosmological language of the barbarians. So that applies to all of us, everybody. The seers made use of the same inspired radicals to express food and instruction. This is in very interesting. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say with that. So I'm just, I'm, I'm very, very happy. So it is not the science of truth, the food of the soul. So, thus the papyrus scroll, or the biblos, devoured by the prophet Ezekiel, which Ezekiel uh, 3, 1 through 1, or 3, 1 through 3, uh, the little book which an angel has the author of the book of Revelation. This is very insane. Um, eat. So, the feasts in the magical palace of Asgard, to which Gang... Get whatever the hell that name is, I don't know, Ganglary is invited uh, by Har, the sublime. So, the miraculous multiplication of the seven loaves, um, as recounted by the evangelists of the Nazarene. So, the living bread, which San Jesus has his disciples eat, while saying to them, this is my body, unquote, and the masses of other similar lines are the repetition of the same allegory, the lives of souls which are nourished by the truth, the truth which multiplies itself without ever diminishing and, to the contrary, um, augments as we eat, oh, as we eat it. So, I thought that was pretty great, pretty, pretty great. I just, I mean, oh my god. So, the book of Enoch is something um, very familiar, or is something that I must get my hands on and really read, which this book I have to read again because it's just, it's too much. So, there is the seven signs of John, wait, St. John, yes, um, apocalyptic, apocalyptic keys. So, we know that those are all metaphors all metaphors, nothing about that is literal. So, I, I just, I thought that was amazing that I had to share that with all of you. So, I'm sorry if it pisses anybody off, I don't care. But yes, I just found that to be awesome and amazing and I kind of want to go back to the Bible now, but I, then I'm like, no, I don't. I, you know, I don't want to make myself sick reading that fucking stupid book. Because it makes me sick, obviously. But I mean, I, it's, it's very cool. But very cool. I'm very, very happy with what I am finding in this book. Um, with, you know, the tarot, everything. It is just after reading that and then doing cards, you know, the tarot at night, completely different. Very, very different. So you get a totally different understanding of the tarot by actually reading that. So I'm just, I'm amazed. Um, 
giving them the ability to uh, literally, you know, hone in on somebody and see how they're going to react. That way you can take those necessary steps to avoid, you know, uh, that giant uh, fucking uh, red flag. Which I thought was pretty cool. So, alright. Go talk. Not to be rude, but some of the comments. Oh, I know. Some people are fucking ridiculous. I mean, it's the stupidest comments you'll ever read. And it's from trolls. They're just, they have nothing better to do. It's so fucking stupid. You you know. I mean, is it safe to use the Ouija alone? That's the most common question that I get every single day. Of course. Yeah, I, of course it is. Alright, I love you, my darling wicked witch. You're not a wicked witch. I love you, so, alright, Jade. Hello, how are you? Hello there, hi. Um, I have to say, I found your, I find your channel very interesting and that I've watched other videos of yours. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. Very, very, very much. Alright, I also have two questions for you, and if you can and want, please answer them. Okay, I will. I want to. Thank you. Number one. I have seen you doing Ouija sessions by yourself. People say it is dangerous to do it alone. Is it true? No. No. Um, these people um, watch movies too much. If you believe it's true, if you believe that you're going to have something negative, any of you, if you believe something negative is going to pop up because you're using the board alone, um, then it is. So, if you have a bad Ouija session, it's your own fault. Your subconscious mind. You have got to get rid of all the fears. All of the negative uh, stereotypes around the board. Because what we talk to is already outside of the board. It's just a tool. No more dangerous than uh, using a ghost box. I think those are more dangerous. Or EVPs. So. Or flipping through the Bible if you're Christian and uh, landing on a page and a specific number to answer a question. It's all the same. So, alright. Two, I have watched a few YouTube videos with people coming, uh, people opening uh, Dipic boxes. I recently found out about these bo this boxes, these boxes. Do you think that opening a box like that would let a demon out, or do you think the box boxes are fake? Um, I would open one, of course, because I don't believe that anything bad is going to happen if I do. Um, I guess it's all in your beliefs. It really, literally is. Uh, you you create your reality with your beliefs. I don't believe that the Divic boxes are evil. Uh, what else? What was that? I don't think a demon would be let out um, at all. I mean, I guess it's possible. So I'm not ruling it out. I don't. I don't think they're fake. Um, I mean, I've seen real, you know, Divic boxes. I don't think they're fake. Um, I just think people get really hyped up when they open up a Divic box. Um, I don't, I, what show, what ghost show was that on? There's too many. So, just steer clear of ghost shows that, you know, tell you, okay, well, you know, we're having a Ouija session and this is gonna, this is bad, this is happening. No. That they're making that happen. Especially the Dybbuk boxes, I think, are probably very misunderstood as well. Um, the Dybbuk box is Jewish, I know that. So, um, I'm not sure. Um, I would have to find a person that is very well, uh, 
educated in uh, Judaism and uh, mysticism and Hebrew mysticism and Kabbalah. Interesting though, I would love to see or have a Divic box. So, I hope I answered your question as best as I could. Alright. Okay, Wicked Witch. Hi, my love. Okay, yep, a person can create an entity through their mind, literally, yes. And that is what Zozo is. That is how Zozo came about. Very true. Alright, Wicked Witch, you look so different in a good way. Oh, that was a long time ago. Oh my god. Okay, I love this one. Everybody has to listen to Wicked Witch. I love this. Alright. Zozo is not a real daemon. He is a false made up whatever, whatsoever the fuck you want to call him. I work with daemons and cannot get him to come forth. There you go. You have to believe it first. And that was when I was working with uh, Darren Evans. Um, and he had me and many others under the influence of his mass hysterical delusional demon Zozo. So my subconscious mind literally produced what I thought was Zozo. So, yeah, I, that's why he won't come forth, because you don't believe in him. And I don't believe in it either, so it's it's not going to happen anymore. It'll never happen again. With Zozo. A clown, maybe. I would love to talk to a clown. So, okay. Um, that was over, oh, this, yes, this was over a year or more ago. Yes, that was a long, long time ago. So, if I use the board always, know what sport you are talking to. I don't believe anyone has gotten possessed by the Ouija. No. I think it's all false. It's all fake. It's all made up for money and lies. Or money and whatever. 15 minutes of this limelight. I myself, as Ryan knows, do work with daemons and summon them. Yes. And um, I have been possessed many times. And it's an amazing feeling. And feel free to tell me I'm going to hell. You're not. There's no hell. You are not. There's no way that you are going to hell if it does not exist. Because what a big person people are sitting behind a computer and something a person. Anyone can do that. I love you. I fucking love you. Very true. Right there. Some some Zozo up right there for everybody. Again. Alright. Wicked Witch. No, I want to go to a real haunted ass place. I do too. I do too. The, the real, the truly authentic, authentically haunted, uh, whatever, anywhere. Um, I heard of one, I forgot what state it's in, but you stay there for a night and you're, you only get a flashlight and that is it, and if you make it you get like 50,000 bucks. No one has ever made it. Fuck, we could do it. Me and you? Oh my god, it'd be fucking easy. Fuck, I would. <laughs> Would too. Let's go. I'm so serious. Oh my god, I love that attitude you have. Tell them I love you. I think that would be amazing if we could go. Just let me be able to smoke and take my sleep aid. And we're good to go. A little bit of coffee in the morning. A little bit of coffee for the ghosts. Who keeps fucking calling me on these stupid... God damn text-free. I, I can't receive messages or calls, so stop it. Yes, very true, Wicked Witch. Okay, alright, Wicked Witch. A lot of maths I know are pretty fucking stupid. I died. I, I don't even know what the fuck he was talking about. I don't care what's going on in the news now. Oh, a 94-year-old woman is missing. That's sad. Okay. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck he was talking about. Um, they, people just make my head hurt worse than it already does daily, so... My hate is already at capacity today. I can't have any more hate up here, or I will blow up. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm actually very, very happy. Very joyful. I'm not happy. Joyful. Alright, Sandra. Hi! I have the angel board too, but I only get negative spirits. What are what do you believe subconsciously? Because um, everything that you get through the board is your own fault. I, I don't 
um, I'm not saying. I don't know how to say this nicely. Um, okay, what we believe subconsciously, if we don't even think about it, if we, if it's you know embedded subconscious subconsciously, uh, that we are going to get negative things through the board, then that's what we're gonna get. So just take your time, take your time, um, and evaluate. We'll keep journal journal. Why? Why are you getting negative entities or spirits? Um, do they have, are they truly negative, or are they trying to get to you because you can possibly help them, you know, get to their mm, dimension that they want to go to? Um, I, I, like I said, I don't know how to say this nicely, but it's your own fault. Um, so if I have a bad Ouija session and it's, it's negative, it's my own fault. Um, if somebody else has a bad Ouija session and gets negative spirits, it's their fault, so yes. Um, I have personally had, actually, no, I haven't, crap, just, just focus on, um, focus on one spirit, Ch pick an ancestor, an ancestor or a spirit guide or an angel, start there, and if something uh, negative comes through, just tell it to go away, say, okay, thank you, goodbye, done, um, but yeah, just, just focus on the good and journal. Lots of journaling, it helps, I promise. So, um, also, um, I do have my book, um, Ouija Pop, um, A Practical Guide to uh, Using the Ouija by Yourself, and Karen Dahlman, her book, The Spirits of Ouija, Four Decades of Communication. Um, that explains everything, so. All right. So yes, yeah, just, just, you know, try it. You know, try to just focus on the positive, don't worry, don't freak out, um, put the board away for a bit, and try again. So, alright, uh, I don't even know how the fuck to say your name, but you have a ceiling fan as a picture. I can't take you seriously if you are a ceiling fan. Can you do Freddie Mercury? No. No. I won't. Kurt Glover. What a remarkable stone that our creator the goddess made. I know. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It makes you look really rich. Um, Alright. Monica. Shout out. I love you, my sis. Alright. Oh, um, yeah, shout out. Um, Alexandra Hill. Sorry. Dark Prince Lucy. Hello. How are you? Just Jay. Hello. How are you? Shout out. Uh, Roxy the Foxy. Hello. How are you? Alright. Kate the Witch. Hi, my darling. How are you? Uh, Damini Das. Hello. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Kane. Hi. Hello. Blah, blah, blah. Hello. God, that came out really odd. Uh, Shara Harris, hi. How are you, my darling? Um, m I don't know how to say your name. Map, map, rap, uh, map. I'm just gonna say Mape. Map. Hello, my lovely Ryan. Hi. How are you? Um, Erica Guerrero. Hello, hello, hello. Lady or Linda K. Hello, shout out. Love you. All right, Lobo Peep. Shout out. Alright, Drew's Paranormal Vlog. Shout out, I love you. Marjorie, hi my darling, I love you. Um, Eleanor, hello, I love you. Lisa Oaks, I love you. All of you, very much. So. I hope that answered some questions. Um, I would love a Dipic box. Honestly, I would do it. So. But, alright guys, so. Hopefully everybody goes out and gets that book now, and we really start to really delve into the tarot with that much more meaning, so. Alright guys, um, everybody have a good day, um, I love you all, and I will see you all tomorrow, so. Alright, all the way from Venus, all the way back down, 
So I will see you all tomorrow. And remember, just focus, go slowly, plan your sessions a day ahead. Don't focus on the negative because it's only, it's gonna just get worse. It's like a magnifying glass. So just to, if negativity does come, tell it to fuck off. So, all right, I love you all very much. Everybody have a great day and remember you will have an amazing Ouija session. Or better yet, you will never have an amazing Ouija, Ouija session. Don't you dare have an amazing Ouija session. Ever. That's a little bit of reverse psychology, but just remember just to be, just focus and go slow. So, alright guys, I will see you tomorrow. Oh, I'm not shut off. Okay, bye guys.